We are just getting ready for the national anthem as the players are going to walk out onto the field any moment. You can see them lined up on the far sideline. UOIT will be in the home blues and Queens will be in their yellow kit this this afternoon. Beautiful day here in London. 13, 14 degrees here at game time. Absolutely gorgeous out. No excuses for either team for this, and uh, we're expecting a fantastic final here today. Alongside me is our color, color commentator on car, but before we get to talk to him, we are going to set up for the national anthem as the players will take their positions on the field for this anthem. And we will be right, we will come back right after this anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for sitting with us through that beautiful rendition of the National Anthem. Both teams are going to do the handshakes as customary in soccer, and we are going to get this Final Four underway. Before we get there, let's take a recap of what happened here on Friday in London as these two teams played in the semifinals. UOIT played in the first game against Windsor and won 3-1 after a fantastic match between the two. PK was the difference in that one for the UOIT Ridgebacks as they are here in the final four for the uh, in the finals of this year. Queens took a very different approach. They ended up having to play the hometown Western Mustangs in their semifinal match. That game was a fantastic match that saw Queens come out victorious 2-0 at the end of the game. These two teams come in very hot as of late and they're going to look to continue that uh, positive look forward going into this game. UOIT is 2-0 in these playoffs and they beat Laurentian 2-0 to make it into the semifinals on Friday whereas Queens won a game against Ottawa 1-0 to reach the semifinal on Friday as well in double overtime. That is an uh, unbelievable way to get into the semifinals here in London. I'm looking forward to this one as well. Ankar will be back in a second, ladies and gentlemen, to keep us up to date with a coach's look at this game. UOIT coming in this game led the OUA in goals four with 60 in the regular season, which is an unbelievable stat considering they only played 16 games. They averaged almost four goals a game. And that, considering most games are 1 0 or 2 1. You're very surprised to hear stats like that. But they weren't just an offensive power. They were a defensive stalwart as well, only giving up nine goals against in those 16 games. Queens is no slouch, though, as they come in scoring 39 goals in 16 games with just averaging under two and a half goals a game. I'm looking, we're looking forward to this one as there's going to be some huge offensive power. UOIT has one of the top goalkeepers in the OUA having the OUA East all first team all-star keeper on their squad and 
a bunch of first team all stars as well, including Kylie Bordaloo and Catherine Kohler Grasso, as along with Cassandra Shribney up front. And it looks like Shribney and her strike partner Henderson are going to kick us off here. I apologize, that's not Henderson up the middle, but Henderson's out wide, and uh, Shribney's going to start us off here with UOIT getting the ball to start the game. As we wait for the first whistle, and there it is, and here goes the UOIT Ridgebacks trying to start something quick, but it's going to go right to the Guelph back line, and they're going to set up around the back. So comes out to the right side, and is promptly kicked straight out right into the stands, right around us. Unfortunately, that ball is uh, in behind the stands now, and they're going to have to try to find it. It'll be interesting to see this one as uh, UIT comes in after winning that game 3-1 and uh, on a very late goal by Windsor, which might have taken uh, a bit of the momentum out of the sails of the Ridgebacks coming into this final, but they'll look to continue their scoring ways after scoring three in that semi. As Wasson carries it into the middle, finds her midfielder, and the UIT Ridgebacks are going to start setting something up. But Queens is all over them in that midfield spot as Henderson flicks it, trying to find a flick to herself, unable to do so there, and Queens brings it down, gets it out to Radu on the side, and her pass forward is blocked by number six on the Ridgebacks, Zajac, and it's gonna be a Queens throw with Radu on the near side. Good flick on there by number 12. Uh, Matias Skoko, she got two in the semifinal against Western. So she's going to be a uh, player to watch in this game, as is Taja Henderson, number 12 for the Ridgebacks. Keep an eye on those number 12s, ladies and gentlemen. They're going to be the ones to do some damage today as Queens passes the ball around and gets it out to the left side. Number 15 there is Claudia Glasspool trying to beat her defender. Great block there by the UOIT Ridgeback defender. It's going to be a throw for Queens. They're going to try to set something up down this left side. It was very dangerous on Friday playing against Windsor. Number six, Wolever, Jenny Wolever, uh, was a offensive juggernaut on Friday for the Queens Gales as that ball rolls out of play and it's going to be a UOIT throw deep in their own end. Great throw there, finds Henderson. She's able to bring it down and try to send it forward. Unfortunately, that ball's gonna roll out of play for a Queen's throw. Queen is gonna wanna catch UOIT early, try to force them to play the Queen's style of play. And if they can, they're gonna be great. And there's Bertram up front, making sure that nothing comes out of that one. The ball's played out wi wide. They're going to try to give it to Wolever in the corner. Jenny Wolever tried to keep that in. Unfortunately, that one didn't stay in, and she's, they're going to get a UOIT throw, once again, deep in their own end. Queens has done a great job so far forcing the play towards UOIT, and now UOIT is going to get a chance to try to break out of their own end as that one is sent forward to Shribney just a little too far for her. Queens is able to clear it, and that one that one sent forward once again to Shribney. She gets uh, knocked down. No foul as both players were going for that one. And Radu sends it forward to Bartram. She controlled it, but lost it on the second touch. And it's going to go all the way back to UOIT's keeper. That's Helen Frampton in net for the Ridgebacks, and she had a great game on Friday. She places the ball on the ground, and she's going to kick it out. Great kick forward. Henderson looks for the – or, sorry, that's Shribney looking for the flick to Henderson. And it comes off as the Queens defender was unable to clear it. Henderson with a nice cut, trying to get into that box, trying to force the play, looking for some support, finds it in number 25, Catherine Kohler Grasso, the first team all-star for the East. But she loses the ball, and Queens is going to come the other way. Good pressure here from – both teams are forcing the play. They don't want to really take any big chances, but at the same time, they are still fighting for every inch of this field as that ball is going to be out for a Queens throw. Glasspool going to throw it back in for us here. She gets it in. That ball 
a weak cross and it's going to be picked up by the defender. Henderson tries to flick it on once again to Shrimney. They did that a lot all season trying to do those one touch flicks on. Unfortunately that one didn't come off and that pass from Radu is going to just miss her winger Almeida and go out for a UIT throw. Boisson, Boisson. Boisson gets the ball in and uh, unfortunately they lose it to the Queens midfield. And that's sent out wide to Glasspool one more time. They're working down this left flank here. The Queens Gales are. He sends it in. Henderson flicks it on to the midfielder ch chipping up as Shrimney cuts across and tries to get a shot off. Great defending there by the Queens player. May have picked up a bit of a knock on that one but did a great job making sure that there was no shot. Radu carries the ball out, tries to send it forward to Bartram, but Wasson is there. Good ball in there from Zajac. Unfortunately, Shribney wasn't looking for a through ball, and that's just going to roll out for a goal kick. We're looking at two very, very strong keepers in this game. After talking about Helen Frampton being the OUA East first team all-star, we also have to take a look at Queen's keeper, Madison Tyrell. She had a great season for the Gales and is looking to continue that forward and try to win this gold medal in the OUA. As that ball's headed down to Radu, she tries to find Almeida along the sidelines. It does a great one-two with her, and that ball is cleared and headed back by Bordeloup. Ball bounces around the midfield, and that ends up on Zajac's foot. And great ball into Shrimney. She's going to bring it down the left side. Try to find Henderson in the middle, just a little bit too far forward for her, that ball, and it's going to end up in the hands of Tyrell. Queens is going to look to set something up here. And that ball sent forward. Great job by Zajac to get in the way of it, but just sent it straight up in the air, and she'll try to flick it forward on the second ball. Bartram gets to it first and sends it up to Almeida, but Almeida is unable to control it. And Zajac tries to play it through, but unfortunately for her, that's blocked by Radu. And it's going to be a UOIT throw. Both teams seem to want to play down their left flank as of now. Everything has been down this side for UOIT on the near side. Great turn there by Shribney. And uh, Queens is doing the same thing, trying to play down their left side through Woolever. Great ball over the top there. That's going to be Zajac looking to cross it. As it comes in, uh, Tyrell unable to get to that, but it's cleared by the Queens Gales. Almeida passes it back to Radu. And he clear she clears it forward. There's Ryan. No Queens Gale anywhere close to that ball. It looks like their uh, striker has taken a step back into the defensive position. Great. 1-2 there from Henderson, but it just didn't get through to Shribney. The defense there by Alicia Levy was fantastic in the right position. And uh, Radu takes a knee for an injury. It looks like she's going to have to come off on a quick substitution. As uh, we'll now get a chance to talk to uh, my color commentator for today, <laughs> Ankar Dillon. Uh, Ankar, assistant coach of the Queens or what, uh, Guelph women's team, sorry. Um, so far this game has been a little bit back and forth, no real great opportunities, but uh, UOIT having those two strikers, Shribney and Henderson up front, have done a great job working off each other uh, and trying to force the play, and it looks like Queens has done a great job of stopping them so far. Yeah, we've got two two solid teams here, one known to be an attacking threat in UOIT, and Queens uh, been known across the league as being a strong defensive group and should line up for a great gold medal match. I mean, when you have two offensive teams like this, uh, UOIT first in OUA and uh, Queens third in goals four per uh, goals four during the season. You're expecting some fireworks, and uh, so far we've gotten uh, two teams that aren't giving each other an inch, pressuring right in the midfield, no stoppages, anything. Well, you're talking about a team that scored 60 goals this year, so I mean they're no slouch in putting the ball in the net. Queens had 39 though. As uh, Tyrell's going to start it up again with a kick out. And it's to Bartram, but unfortunately can't control that one. And uh, Vwasin is going to get a throw in for UOIT. 
throws it in. That ball sent into the box, but both Ridgeback strikers were pinched into the corner trying to receive that off the throw, so no yeah. one was in the box for that one. And Tyrell is going to kick it out one more time. Good kick there, right to Williams for the Ridgebacks. And they get the, uh, but Queens gets the ball into Wolever. She's a very dangerous player, so the UOIT right back is going to be all over her this game to make sure she doesn't get out. Yeah, Jenny Wolliver, very high quality wide player. There's not many of them in the league, but uh, she tends to create a lot of uh, dangerous stuff from wide positions. She's had a great playoff so far. I understand she played really well against Western in the last game and expect more of that today. Uh, it was a bit surprising that uh, after watching the game on Friday, for sure, that she didn't get an uh, all-star nod in the OUA. In fact, no Queens player got an all-star nod for either first or second team, yeah. which doesn't happen very often in the OUA. At the same time, they are just a solid team effort going into every single game, and that's maybe why their no players stood out. Yeah, it goes in with their mantra. It seems like they're a team first kind of unit and uh, everyone plays a, a part. Uh, I, I was shocked with the result too that they didn't have any all-stars, but um, people, the players and the coaches around the league know who the dangerous players are. For sure, and you know, that's kind of what you expect from these teams, uh, and Queens is no different. They're gonna force everything down the middle as that ball is played over the top and Tyrell is gonna pick it up. The substitution made for Radu, who had to go off injured. Number 16, Savannah Mayer Clement came on for her at right back. That's an early substitution and probably one that the Queens coach did not want to make this early into the game. We are just over 12, uh, just over 11 minutes in and we're going to be uh, watching this game and very closely to see what happens as it looks like there's going to be a free kick. Ref tried to play advantage, unfortunately, the Queens wasn't able to do anything <laughs> yeah. with it, so they're going to call it back and give them a free kick. So far, so good for both teams, though. Yeah, uh, looking at a glance here, both units are very organized. They're all moving in unison. Lots of good chatter, good communication. Both teams prepared to win the gold here today. And that's what you want to hear from, especially as a coach, the communication coming from your team uh, may give you an indication of how the game's going to play as Tyrell comes way out of her net trying to catch UOIT and there's Bartram very tall individual for their for the Queens Gales up front as Shribney takes the ball tries to find Henderson does a great job there good turn there by UOIT by the UOIT player number six Nicole Zajac and that ball from Boston just missed Henderson and Queens is going to try to set something up there's Callender in the middle being chased down by Henderson and Henderson beats her there and there, UOIT is going to go the other way. As uh, I just heard Callender say, well, talk to me. <laughs> Guess uh, Queens wasn't paying attention and just didn't give her uh, indication that there was a man on. And what you notice with this UIT right off the bat, this team is the, the exchange of positions, the movement by the front players. They're always coming off the back line of Queens, looking for the ball and looking to exchange positions uh, with uh, Henderson and, and Shermby. These players are, are dynamic. They move. They cause trouble. They're very busy up top, and we see that in the goals they score. And they did a great job on Friday, for sure, making those one-touch flick-on balls, uh, and that was a... Uh, Big thing to help them force the play on Windsor on Friday. Let's see if they can do that again today against Queens. Yeah, it's a high mobility side here, and, and they, they count on, on the runs that they make to create their offense. So we expect to see a lot of that here today. As uh, Wasson holds the ball ready to throw it in, Henderson was just tying her shoes. So she was <laughs> trying to kill a little bit of time. That ball's going to be sent into Shribney. Tried to chest it down to her uh, teammate, Zajac, but just unable to find that ball and Zajac makes a nice block and it's going to be a Queens throw deep in their own end. As this game unfolds I expect to see a, a, a Titan defense side very organized very disciplined defensive side against a dynamic uh, flair filled offensive side in UOIT so this this is going to cut the makings of a great one. Another thing you see early on at least at least right now uh, the compactness of UOIT mm -hmm. when they don't have the ball Williams has come over from the right side. She's playing all the way on the left side almost. It looks like they have four midfielders on one ha half of the field right now. And they've done a great job uh, just making sure that Queens has nothing when they get the ball. Mm -hmm. Could step up and pass into the middle. And, and now Bordelieu gets it all the way at the back. And she's going to try to find a ball. Tried to play it over the top to Wasson. Unable to do so. That one's going to end up up here onto the table. <laughs> 
And that looks like Voisin's really trying to overload this left side, create matchup problems for the right back of Queens. And so far, both teams have been playing down their left side primarily. I mean, when you have Zay Jack Henderson and Shribney all kind of making a trio on this left yep. side for UOIT, you got to like that. But on the other side, there's no slouches over there. You got Woolever running that left side for Queens, and they're going to want to go through her a lot today. I expect that the lion's share of their attack will be to try to get Jenny Woolover involved. She's very, yeah, very Here she quick. goes right now. Very quick down that left side as she has the ball right now, and she pushes it by and gets fouled there by the UOIT defender. Yeah, and you're right. They're going to try to get the lion's share for her sent down that sideline just to make sure she, uh, she gets in the play. She can dictate the game well, from the outside. You know, she, she's got seven assists this year. It's one of the top, one of the top ten in the country. Uh, she creates, uh, you know, assists aren't easy to come by in the OUA, uh, and, and she t gets bags of them. It's more for the fact that the stats people don't like to give them, <laughs> but that's okay as uh, that ball into the box was defended very well by the Ridgebacks, and Jenny Woolever won't let them clear it. She's been on every single ball so far as this one's sent back into the box, and good compact defense from the Ridgebacks as that one's played over the top. And Ryan chests that down. Very dangerous to do in your own box, but she did a great job of it. And now here comes UOIT as <laughs> Shrimney tried to play that ball over, and that's going to be a yeah. and ball? risky defensive play. You you got to get that one right, or it could be catastrophe for your team. Yeah, but Ryan did a great job with that one. Yep. Uh, her and Bordelou make a formidable force at the back line of this UOIT Ridgebacks team. As Mayor Clement sends that one in and that's going to be easy pickings for Helen Frampton. Looking to do maybe a quick distribution, just didn't have the players ready so she's going to send it long trying to find Shribney. Oh, Ooh. she, I think she cut her a little bit. Uh, the Queens player was there, so I think yeah. that's the right call. It was yeah, a little bit dangerous I th from Shribney. Yeah, I think it's dangerous play there. It's a little bit of excessive force. I think the referees handled that one well. Referees have done a very good job so far in this Final Four to make sure that they are uh, keeping control of the game, not letting anything early get the best of them. So uh, that'll be good as Almeida tries to do a couple little moves, gets it back to Mayor Clement, who tries to find Almeida again. And there's, oh, great tackle there by number 10, Calendar, Laura Calendar. Yeah, textbook tackle there by Calendar. That's the way we want young kids to do it. Never like sliding on turf, but sometimes <laughs> you just got to go for you it. pay for it. Br Brittany Almeida showing some good skill on that right side. Let's see if she gets involved a little bit more as the game goes on. As they get it out to Woolliver down that left mid, she's going to try to get into the box, try to find Bartram, unable to. But Bartram makes a nice play to push it into the corner. See if Woolliver can get there, and she does. Beats the UOIT player, and that one's played over the top. Almost finds Almeida at the back post. Finds Calendar, though, off the bounce, and unable to get a good shot away with Bartram and UOIT is just going to have to clear that one and that's going to clear the fence so they're going to have to get a ball from the other side. Yeah, the ball just sat up a little high for Tara Bartram there but I'd fancy her in that spot most of the time. So far so good for both teams. Neither have had a real uh, penetrating ball go through. Queens is now having their five minutes of pressure by the looks of it which is uh, refreshing to see. I think there's a little bit more jump in this game than in the bronze medal game we watched earlier today. Uh, I, I'm seeing a lot more mobility in the midfield, and hopefully that means we'll see some goals. Both teams are really going for this one so far. A lot of uh, pressure forward as that ball sent over the top, and Shermie is going to give chase, see if that one rolls out, and that one will. As uh, Levy just watched that one go out. Shermie sends the ball over the top for Henderson to give chase. I was going to end up in the stands, and then we're going to get another UOIT throw. An interesting matchup here today. As we've said multiple times now, both teams are offensive. UOIT first, Queens third in goals. We're both pressing forward, at least, so it'll be, uh, we're, we're expecting a lot of fireworks so far as that ball's going to end up out for a UOIT throw deep in the uh, Queens end. Well, we saw earlier today in the bronze medal game, uh, set pieces were a factor. Lots of corner kicks, wearing down a, a defensive line. Free kick was the goal. Let's see if that's a factor here today as well. As that ball's played into the box, and Williams tries to give chase, but great defending there by number four, Aaron Cliff at the back. 
That ball was almost dangerous back in, though, afterwards. Good play by Tyrell to come out and grab it. Probably a little push in the back there by Tara Henderson. Tasia Henderson trying to get herself in a good spot. Ball switched out to Myra Clement on the right side. She's going to try to find a ball. Gives it to Almeida, who's going to try to beat a player. And she tries to thread that ball through three UOIT players, unable to, and uh, UOIT is going to reset. Sent out wide and tried to get it back into the middle, but there's Callender to intercept that one. They're going to try to give it to uh, Bartram again and unable to complete that pass. Ball's played over the top. Henderson and uh, Cliff, good battle there between the two of them. Henderson tries to beat her inside, is able to. Good layoff there from Henderson. Uh, return pass just out of her reach, and Tasia sends the ball into the corner and just is going to try to beat her with speed. That ball's great job by Mayor Clement to win that one in the corner and find Callender to get the ball out. Good footwork there by Queens number 10. As that one uh, goes off Bartram and it's gonna be a throw in for UOIT. Tasia Henderson got some pep in her step today and she she's moving and she's asking questions of the Queens back line. Look for her to be involved in the OUA attack. Good ball forward to Shribney. She's able to, she tries to bring it down unfortunately, just a little bit too hard of a touch. Good move there by Jenny Woolever. She's going to go for a bit of a run. Good one, two with uh, Bartram just a little behind Woolever. Unfortunately for them, because she would have been in behind the UOIT defense. But they still have control of the ball as it's going to be switched out to Mayor Clement. She tries to bring it back into the middle. That was a missed pass, and that one's over the top for Henderson. Got a one on one, and she's going to beat Cliff. Cuts into the middle. Good finish by Tasia Henderson, and there's the first goal of this final. one nothing Ridgebacks. Wow, that's a great goal by Tasia Henderson. She's taken a first touch to move the goalkeeper and just slotted that ball in, calm as you like. And, you know, probably the first uh, defense, first error the Queens uh, lineup has made. They, they knocked a square ball in a dangerous spot, cut out, and uh, UIT shows you why you can't make mistakes around them. And that was a uh, great ball over the top for Henderson. Just high enough to get over the first defender and far enough to the outside to make sure Aaron Cliff didn't have a chance to get it. And as we restart, 1-0 Ridgebacks, 22 minutes into this first half. Ball ends up back out on the right side to Mayor Clement. She's going to get it into the feet of Laura Callender. She tried to turn, but there's uh, Bordeloo. There to intercept <laughs> as a uh, ball tried to play through to uh, Henderson, unable to get it there. And but she's going to go give chase as uh, Alicia Levy plays the ball out of play for a throw-in for U -O U -O I T. Nick Queens is going to have to watch their passing accuracy here. And it's a couple times now they've been burned by playing an inaccurate pass or an unforced error, if you like. And they're going to have to watch that because U I T will capitalize and they will hurt you. And they'll to do it quickly too. They don't want to waste too much time on the ball as uh, Shribney comes in and pushes the Queens player who had position out of play and that's going to be another free kick for Queens. So far so good for UOIT for sure. They're playing exactly how they did on Friday and exactly how I think they want to play if with this lineup. They want to keep the ball moving. They don't want a lot of aerial battles. They want nice tight interplay and that's what they're getting right now. This match favors their style. When you have offensive players like Shribney, Henderson, uh, Zay Jack, and even number 10, uh, Jessica Mithrush going forward. You gotta, you gotta like those numbers. They can get Williams to play as well as she can. That's a dangerous front five, really. And that's gonna be a foul by Almeida just inside the UOIT half. A little frustration foul there by Almeida. I mean, the Queen's attack is revolves around their wide players and it looks like uh, UIT is giving them no space to breathe and, and you're seeing that in Brittany Almeida. Riff did a good job though of uh, calling that one and making yeah. sure that they, uh, as, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they tried to play a quick one with Bordelou trying to pass it off to Voisin, but uh, Ref said, uh, no, <laughs> we'll try that again. Yeah. And uh, Bordelou will line this one up captain of this UOIT team, one of the better defenders in the OUA. 
and uh, she's gonna send this ball down to Nicole Sajak. Trying to find Vlasen just a little bit behind her, unfortunately, and uh, it's gonna be a Queens throw. Yeah, the Ridgeback set up uh, interesting there on their set piece. They were well spread out. They weren't looking just to lump a ball in. There was an idea there, and I, I would suspect that that was a set piece. That one sent down the line, and uh, Shribney, Shribney gets that ball back. Kohler Gresso out on the left side, sends it in the corner to Sajak, and she crosses it in. Fantastic cross, very dangerous there at the top of the box. Unfortunately, no Ridgeback player there as Jenny Woolever does a nice touch to beat the one defender. Unfortunately, Williams had uh, did a great job tracking back to support her defensive player. They get the ball into Henderson up on the right side. She's going to try to find a player to pass that ball off to. Unable to do so, but she ends up winning a uh, throw in on the far side. Even on the cross there, Tasia Henderson up uh, from serious vertical there, causing problems. Uh, she's brought her playing boots here today. I suspect she's going to be a big part of this game. As uh, Queens is going to make a substitution, Almeida and Bartram are off. And coming on for the Gales is I'm just trying to see the numbers here looks like it's number 14 coming on for Almeida that would be Sarah Nixon and up front Lauren Linkfist is number 17 Lauren Winquist who came on in the game on Friday a former Mustang player back here at the University of Western trying to Help her new squad to OUA gold. That one's flicked on by Calendar. Lots of flicks by the UOIT. There's three in a row from the Ridgebacks. Unfortunately, no Ridgeback on the other end as it ends up out on this near side. Pretty dramatic change here in the Queen's attacking lineup by removing two strikers. Tara Bartram was starting to get into this game. Uh, I, I suspect that the coach wasn't happy with what he saw, but bringing in Winquist, different look. They did that on Friday as well. It looked like uh, on Friday they were going for speed over height against Western uh, with Jenna White and Annabelle Chan at the back for Western. They wanted a bit more speed up front. So they brought in Winquist, and she did a great job forcing the play. I'm wondering if that's the tactic now. They wanted speed over height against Bordeloup and Ryan of the UIT back line. This throw is sent into Henderson, and she does a good job bringing it down and flicking it past her defender, but got a little handsy and pulled the <laughs> Queens player back, and it's going to be a free kick for the Gales almost at half. Sent forward, and Winquist tries to get her head on it. Unfortunately, can't do so as Shribney. Good call there by the ref as Shribney had the positioning. She <laughs> tries to carry the ball away for some reason. Usually you don't see that from the offensive team, but you never know when uh, Bordeloup is going to set up here. No problem. Bordeloup sends it out wide, trying to find Williams. Beats her and the Queens defender, but she does a great job trying to get there. Unfortunately, just unable to keep that ball in. Again, tactically, the set pieces, Bordeloup trying to find the channels, uh, not looking to put something at the top of the box, uh, trying to create some 1v1s out wide. Throw in for Queens here as uh, they get the ball back in. They send it forward, and that's going to be tipped out by the UOIT Ridgebacks. 16 minutes to play, plus stoppage time in this first half. UOIT leads 1-0 on an early goal from Tasia Henderson. That ball's played to Callender. She's going to get it out wide to Mayor Clement. And here come the Queens Gales trying to play that ball into the middle. Unfortunately, no Queens player is there, and it's just going to be cleared by the Ridgebacks. Sajak with a nice head forward from Shribney, who tries to turn and find Henderson. Unable to get there, but Queens is able to switch it out to the far side. Ball into Jenny Woolever. She does a good job trying to beat a player, but 
unfortunately for her, it's going to be bounced off her and for UOIT throw. If Queens is going to get themselves going in this game, they're really going to have to improve their midfield play, find their front players, uh, players like Laura Cal Callender, Skoko, Bredo. They're all, they're all going to have to really create some passes. Can we stretch this UOIT team apart and create some seams? And right now, uh, they're a couple passes short. Well, let's look for them to make the extra pass so they can find those front dynamic players. And as we were saying earlier in this game, UOIT has done a great job coming really compact every time they lose that ball we have even right now I think they have 10 or 11 players all on the same side of the field which is hard to do um, but when they oh that's a giveaway and here comes Lauren Winquist coming in passes it off and there's a good shot great save there by Frampton Great individual piece of play by Winquist there, and a little unselfish dink across the box. Almost, almost got themselves a goal. Yeah, it didn't look like she uh, was confident in her, her ability to shoot from that spot. It might yeah. have been an awkward angle. It's hard to tell from here. Yeah, I think um, she was on the outside of her foot. It might have been a hard one for her. And Sarah Nixon got a good opportunity though from the great pass across from Winquist as uh, Henderson and Shribney keep trying those one-touch uh, <laughs> flick-ons to each other. Henderson's a class above today, Nick. As she forces Erin uh, Cliff to make a pass, and she gets it out to Mayor Clement. Fantastic play there by the defender. Very hard to do as Queens tries to play down their right side, and that's going to be a foul from Nixon. Maybe a little bit of frustration after missing that goal <laughs> opportunity. It's possible. This is a dangerous spot. Uh, as we saw earlier today, goals can be created from these balls going into the box. Very different setup, though, from uh, UOIT than when Windsor scored their goal. Windsor had everybody at the top of the box. UOIT is at six players in front of the ball, but everyone is spread, spread out. out yeah. And now they're starting to move people in. Borderly is taking her time to set this one up. Here comes the ball into the box. A Fantastic nice ball, in. ball over the top. Unfortunately, no, queen, no UOIT players going far post. I think that plays right into Queen's hand. I think they fancy themselves in, in, in the aerial game. Um, maybe UIT needs to stick with the spread approach, create 1v1s. Fantastic ball, though, from Bordeloo. Beautiful. And, uh, had they had anyone really running to that back post, they mm -hmm. might have had a chance there. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, everyone is running to the middle and the near post, which is something that the coach might want to talk to at halftime after that great opportunity. Yeah, they've had some set pieces here today. They, they need to script them. These are important in the playoffs. They're important in any game, <laughs> but more important in the playoffs. Yeah, certainly. All the teams are on their top game. Ball sent in from Cliff. Great ball forward. If Portaloo is unable to clear that, it might cause some problems for UOIT. That one's going to be sent back out. Henderson brings that ball down. It's going to end up out on the right side as Williams looks forward towards Henderson, and she's going to... See if she can find Shribney. Unfortunately, that pass is just out of her reach. And Queens is going to come back the other way. The pressure from UOIT is suffocating right yeah. now for this Queens team. They're a high mobility unit, and they're going to swarm you, and, and they're going to come right on you and force you to make a mistake, and that's what we've seen so far. Yeah, they're going to make you make a play instead of you dictating the game. As that ball rolls out of play for a goal kick. Yeah, the speed of UOIT has become very evident in this first little bit of this game, uh, pressuring every single ball faster than I've seen in a long time at this level. They're making Queens have to think 10 times faster than they probably yeah. would normally do in a regular season game. Yeah, P Paven uh, will have them fit, ready to go, and, uh, and, a, and a very distinct and clear game plan, and we're seeing them execute it right now. As that ball is sent forward, and Shribney's the first one to it. She lays it off to Williams, and now Williams is going to try to make a play. Looks forward to her midfield partner, Mithrush, just unable to get that pass in. Now Queens is going to set up down that left side. Fortunate for them, they couldn't get through that. As uh, coaches are uh, getting a little vocal on the far side. Well, you can hear Paven asking his team to close down the opposition in the midfield. Again, he wants to continue with that suffocating approach. It's worked for him to date. Doesn't want it to give up in the last 10 minutes of the half here. Of course not. And as you say, there's only uh, 10 and change left in this first half plus stoppage time. Don't want to forget about that. Uh, one nothing UOIT with a goal 15 minutes or so into the first half. That ball's played into the middle. Good step by Kylie Bordeloo. 
and it ends up on the foot of Shribney at the front. She lays it off to Zajac, who tries to play the ball in behind the Queens defense, but great job by Levy. <laughs> Can't hear the <laughs> UOIT coach saying, don't let them out, don't let them out. He wants <laughs> them to force the play into that corner. It's gonna be a Queens throw here. As Mayor Clement's gonna get this ball restarted. She throws it right to Zajac, unfortunately for her. But lucky, lucky enough, they're going to get that another throw chance here. Count them in this corner. One, two, three, four, five, six blue jerseys within maybe 20 yards of each other. Uh, it's defending by committee here right now. Oh, it's They've a tough, pretty good job. It's a tough that. tackle there. Tough tackle, right call from the referee, and uh, Bordeaux is going to get a chance to send another one of those balls in. Looks like they've uh, changed the tactic here a little bit on these free kicks. Again, great yeah. ball in last time. If she can get another one of those in and have yeah. someone going far post, it could cause some issues. We're seeing Voisin creep up this left side here. Here it goes. Ball into the box one more time. Great ball into the box, and Henderson jumps up, unable to get there. Great defending there by Queens to make sure that ball didn't go out for a corner. Don't want to have that happen, so... Ball's played outside to Jenny Woolever. She's going to play it back into the middle to Skoko. Skoko. She's trying to find a teammate. The pressure from UOIT is astounding so far in this first half. Just not letting Queens have any time on the ball. Great tackle there by Nicole Zaj. I think you got it there, Nick. Uh, UIT's got a very clear ga game plan here. No time on the ball, and, uh, and they're executing it to perfection. This is great to watch. Almost 40 minutes in, and they don't even look tired. Not even a bit. If they can keep this up for the rest of the game, uh, I don't see Queens being able to get a whole lot of opportunity going forward. They're going to have to make something happen by set piece or uh, or maybe an individual piece of brilliance by Winquist there. Eventually, they're going to maybe have to push two strikers out front, put Bartram and Winquist, maybe have Winquist drop in behind to create some space off Bartram at the front being the uh, target. you got to figure, apart from injury, Bartram's got a part to play, and Winquist is a little isolated right now, so she's going to need some help soon. That one's contested in the midfield, and there's Brado sending it out wide. Here comes some speed down the left side for Queens as that ball's played into Wollever. Haven't had a chance to talk about her too much during this game yet. She's had a couple runs down the left side, but other than that, she's been kind of isolated out there. Yeah, well, they would have planned for uh, planned a game plan against Jenny Wollover, but like I said earlier, she's in form right now, and she is creating stuff, and she's going to have a part to play here. That ball sent forward to Shribney, and they try to find Henderson on a bit of a run, and Cliff and Levy... Uh, Almost had a miscommunication there. You can keep hearing uh, UOIT coach yelling, chase it, chase it. He doesn't want to give Queens an inch of this field to themselves. I think Coach Pavin Masavat senses that there's a little bit of discomfort here from the Queens back line, and he wants to capitalize while he can. That won't last long. We're a very organized Queens group. They've done a good job keeping compact. I mean, yes, they did let that goal go over the top, but that was a beautiful ball in, mm -hmm. so it's hard to really fault the back line. Yep. They were caught out as a counterattack. There goes Bordelieu carrying that ball forward, passes it to Williams. She tries to find Mithrush, just unable to get that to her foot. And here comes Jenny Woolever cutting into the middle, going on a little bit of a run. She's going straight at the UOIT defense. And there's Nixon out on the right side one more time, just unable to get that touch to set up a shot. She's tried to do her best so far. Yeah, Sarah Nixon, space. nice nice idea there. I, if she pulled a little bit wider, there might have been an opportunity to create a seam there for Jenny to drive into, but uh, I think she was stuck a little narrow on that play. Yeah, Nixon, as you said, uh, played in nine games this year, only started one, so she's a substitute specialist as they try to play the ball in behind once again to Henderson. That seems to be the uh, go-to play. Shribney just flipping it forward for Henderson to chase on. They've real, those two really got their roles identified, and they play off each other uh, fabulously. And I guess if it's uh, if it's not broke, don't fix it. That's the UOIT thought right now. Ooh, it's Wasson. 
Yeah. Bit of uh, confusion going on. It's going to be a URIT throw. The ref wanted to have a talk with Boston just yeah. to make sure she's not being too. A little bit of excessive, yeah. Yeah. I think the ball was out first, though, which mm. is why they wanted to make mm. sure that it was a throw that was an after the fact push. I think that's that's a good thing for the ref to do recognize that the ball was yep. out and that the foul maybe might, might not have happened during the play. It's hard to say that as yeah. a player, a yep. former player at least, that that's the way it is, but. Ball's going to come out to this left side on Zajac. She's going to try to find that ball forward. Passes it off to Shribney. Gets it back from Shribney. Sends oh. it through. Beautiful There's ball Henderson by Zajac. Trying to give chase, but Tyrell is going to do a great job and collect that one. Top drawer ball by Zajac. Good keeping, though, as well from yeah. Tyrell, forcing the uh, ball to be perfect. That one, it was not. Great turn there by number 13, Bradeau. <laughs> kind of been in a little island there in the yeah. middle by herself. May have picked up a little knock there though, unfortunately, and it's going to be a foul from Shribney. Rush going to have a little talk with her. But what happened? But what we see there is indicative of, of the UIT model here. It's closed down. It's attempt to force mistakes, and we saw a beautiful example there. Uh, granted, she came in maybe a little late, and the, and the match official has caught that and viewed it as a foul. But these are dangerous pr plays. If Queens doesn't accelerate their, their play out the back and doesn't move a little quicker, they could get ca caught on a counter again. And it'll be interesting to keep an eye on Shribney. We saw it on Friday. She was a bit uh, emotional near the end of the game and to get a couple very questionable tackles. So if she starts getting a little too for lack of a better term, hyped up, mm -hmm. she it may cause her some issues and may pick up another card. As uh, the ball's played forward down the left side for Queens, but UOIT cuts that one out. See some of the uh, bronze medal winning Western Mustang coming back to watch this game now. Gotta love the support. Throughout the sport, uh, these girls all weekend have been uh, coming out and watching the other games, and uh, maybe it's scouting, maybe it's recruiting, <laughs> making sure that they know what's coming next year. But yeah, well, there's a lot of relationships in between teams here, and it's a testament to the quality of soccer in the OUA. Uh, yeah. The fan support this season has been great. Exactly. I've noticed it for every venue we visited from the University of Guelph. We've seen there's been two to three hundred people at every game, and rain or shine, fan support's there. We're seeing it here today. Yeah, it's fantastic. You like seeing that throughout the OUA uh, schools supporting each other. And I mean, yeah, you're right. These players do play with each other outside of uh, the OUA in their summer leagues, so they form those bonds and they make sure that they get to cheer on their friends That's right. when they're not playing against them, of course. <laughs> sure, me once again goes into a tackle hard. Lost that one to Erin Cliff. She's done a fantastic job at the back, shutting down Shribney as much as possible. Yeah, That's tough task. She's handled it well. The ball ends up on Maya Clement's foot. She sends it forward to Nixon, and her and Wasson fighting for that ball. Good ball forward for Henderson, but great defense there by Levy. And it's going to be a UOIT throw on this near side. Again, they're not taking any chances uh, with Tasia Henderson. Let's go right out of bounds. That's what you should do against a player yeah. with that kind of Beautiful ability. left foot across. Good high left foot across from Tasia Henderson. Maybe a little bit too far if you were looking for an attack off that, but. As Jenny Woolever does a great job to win that ball. Sends it inside to Laura Callender, and she's going to switch it out to Mayor Clement. And she's got tons of space. You can hear all the players in the yellow jerseys yelling, space, space, space. Good flick there. Gets it out to Jenny Woolever. She's going to take the shot, and that's just going to be too high. That's going to be a goal kick. It's just an example of what Laura Callender can do. She creates that offense. She's a great pivot player. She's going to receive the ball from one side. She's going to look to switch the play, change the point of attack. That frees up players like Jenny Woolover to get isolated on, on the weak side, 1v1. So good on Laura Callender. She's going to have to do more of that for Queens to get back in this game. Last minute of regulation time here in the first half, plus a little bit of stoppage time. We're looking at probably a minute, maybe two. Hasn't been any real big stoppages so far as uh, Henderson holds that ball up, trying to find Shribney, just unable to. 
Queens has really come to life here in the last couple minutes, making UOIT feel a little bit uncomfortable. As that ball sent out across to the left side, they're going to try to set something up down that left side. As we said, they were probably going to do all game. Bolivar has dropped back to let the left back make that overlap run, and she did a great job and ended up winning a corner. Last minute corner here in the... Uh <laughs> Well, the theme of the day has been uh, last minute, uh, so let's see if that continues on. We're going to see a corner here, probably one of the last plays of this half, and uh, <laughs> the ref has uh, blown the whistle to say, no pushing, please, doesn't want to see any little things. We just set up a short corner by the looks of it. This ball is going to come into the box. Good ball into the box there. Queens with the header number four are just Ooh. wide of that post. And uh, nice set piece, nice uh, nice header there. That could have been dangerous. That was Aaron Cliff on that header. Good job getting to that one and trying to set up that play. We're gonna get a free uh, goal kick here from Helen Frampton. She hasn't been really tested so far in this first half, and I think that's a credit to the team in front of her being so compact. Oh, yeah. Sends it forward nice and long. Gets it. Good flick. And there's Shermie trying to flick it. Unfortunately, Henderson wasn't uh, around. Mary Clement gets it inside the calendar. Who gets it straight back to Clement, giving her some space. She's going to send it out wide, trying to find Nixon on the run. Unfortunately, just a little too far for her. Out of time. It's got to be coming to an end pretty soon. Uh, as we get ready for this throw in from Boston. Guys, just tries to find somebody to me with a great control. And that's gonna be the end of this first half. A lot of positives for both teams, I think, from that first half. Uh, UOIT using their speed to shut down Queens and force the play is going to be the big talking point, I think, from so far. Yeah, I think both coaches will go into their rooms and, and UOIT will look to keep doing what they're doing. I think they're executing their game plan the way they want. They're going to have to continue getting the ball into Sh Shribney and Henderson to see if we can uh, have them create. Um, Queens has a little bit more work to do. I, I think they have to uh, sort out their attacking solutions. They've tried a couple different attacking looks out there today. Uh, I think they got to slow the game down. Uh, by keeping this game at a frantic pace, it's suiting you OIT. Can we slow this thing down a little bit? Can we play through calendar? I mean, it's a really hard thing to do to say that, though, mm -hmm. because UIT is forcing them to play yep. that quick pace. Yeah. Well, we want we, we, Queens is going to look to want to play the ball east to west uh, to create those seams and then pick their point of attack. By them playing at this frantic pace, it doesn't suit them. Uh, and I think I think when they did get the ball out wide and isolated their wide players 1v1, that's when we got to see what they're all about. Yeah, I mean, especially if they can start isolating uh, Jenny Woolever and letting yep. her yep. do a little bit of attacking down that left side. That's what you're going to look for in that second half to get her into the play, as yep. well as Laura Callender. Trying to get her to force the play forward is going to be a huge thing for Queens going forward. I mean, look for uh, the return of Brittany Almeida, uh, apart from injury, and uh, if we can get Tara Bartram back in this game, I think I think Queens will will go back to what they want to do, and uh, and see if they can find a solution for Tasia Henderson. I think that'll be one of the focal points in their halftime team talk. Can we find a solution for the dynamic Tasia Henderson? And if you're on UOIT, you're looking to make sure you can isolate Henderson and strip me up front with yep. maybe two, possibly or three yep. defenders, and try to force that play forward. Yep. They've done a fantastic job so far getting them the ball and just making sure that they can play that through. Yep. Uh, we are going to take a quick break here at Mustang Field uh, during this halftime. We will be back in about 10 minutes to bring you the second half. And one nothing here at halftime for UOIT over Queens. Porter Airlines is where exceptional student athletes are born. Stay tuned for where records are broken. Where tradition is celebrated where great plays are made, where school colors ignite passion, where champions prevail. Ontario University Athletics, where great sport lives.
exceptional student athletes are born where records are broken where tradition is celebrated where great plays are made where school colors ignite passion where champions prevail Ontario University Athletics where great sport lives
gentlemen, welcome back to the OUA finals here at Mustang Field in London, Ontario. Once again, an absolutely gorgeous day here. We've we've had a fantastic game so far in the first half, and we're expecting some great things coming forward from these UOIT Ridgebacks and Queens Gales. As a coach here, Ankar, you want to look at what kind of tactical changes that Queens could make. What do you think they could do? Well, I, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how these next 10 minutes unfold. Queens is gonna Queens is gonna look to get their attack involved more. Whether we see the return of uh, of Tara Bartram or or we see Brittany Almeida, who we understand is playing with a bit of an injury, uh, we're gonna see what they do. What they have to get their front to involved. Lindquist has come in and made a difference. So how can we get all those players involved? And, and just looking at how they are coming out, it looks like Tara Bartram has returned. It never hurts to have a six foot plus player out there in the front. And maybe they're gonna utilize that, and create some balls in the air, see if they can get some knockdowns and create from that. No doubt that UIT's got the mobility in the midfield and wants to close everything down. But uh, let's watch the Queen's tactical adjustments and see how it impacts them. The first 10 minutes are going to be very telling, Nick. And it looks like uh, Bartram is back in, but we were talking with Marty Painter at halftime. He said, anytime you have Lauren Winquist on your team, you've got to have her on the field. She is a playmaker. So I don't know if they put her back out on the far side or they just switched Jenny Woolever and Brittany Almeida. It looks like Woolever's on the right now. Yeah, we've got Almeida. We were going to what, how we started the game here, so maybe we're going to try to correct some issues that they had there at Queens and, and see if they can fix they, that up. They Almeida, just Woolover, the, uh, Bartram. Yeah, they switched Almeida and Woolover yep. to opposite sides. I guess Woolover liked being clo close to the coach or something. I'm not sure, but <laughs> we'll see going forward as Queens gets us started in the second half with a good stretch of possession here. Bartram gets it outside. Good overlap run there. Glasspool. She gets it into Bartram's feet. Tries to lay it off to Brittany Almeida just a little bit too far ahead, but that's a good stretch of possession there for Queens. That's a positive thing looking forward. That's what they're going to need from Bartram here in the second half. As Tyra Gordon gives chase down the right side. It looks like they drop Shrivney back a step. As Taja Henderson tries to get a shot. Good block there by number four, Aaron Cliff of Queens. She looks like she may have picked up a little bit of a knock, though, unfortunately. But she's getting up, so she's going to continue in. Yeah, Shribney looked like she had dropped back a little bit. She may be going back forward now, but uh, they brought on Gordon up front as well. So they now have three strikers on the field for UOIT. A little bit of a interesting tactical move there from a team that's winning, but... Uh, it could be Pavin could fancy himself here uh, in the first 10 minutes. Think he can get one and create some separation. Get another goal quickly. Force Queens to really have to go forward. Tyrell unable to control that one. And uh, unfortunately for her, fortunately for her, I should say, she was able to jump on that as a Queens player picked up a knock. And the ref blew that one pretty quickly, thankfully. I think she was worried about a possible head injury. It's nothing there. But. Tyra Gordon got on the end of that. Could have been dangerous. Uh, Madison Tyrell's got to hold on to those. And I know it's a challenging spot to be in, but uh, you could pay the price for that. It almost looks like UOIT has moved into a 4-3-3 formation with maybe possibly it'll be interesting to see if that they continue playing that way. Glasspool throws it in quick, gets it right back. Ball played into Bartram. She does. He tries to hold that one up. Bounces over her foot right to Ryan. Good ball outside. They're gonna go for a little bit of a run down that right flank. Alicia Levy trying to beat the UOIT player down the line. I think that was Nicole Zajac on the far side. Did a great job defending that. It's gonna be a Queens throw. Thrown right into Laura Callender. A little bit of a far follow through on that throw, but Laura Callender gets it into the box, tries to find somebody in a yellow jersey, but there's only one in the box. That's not what you want to see if you're Queens going forward. You want a couple more yellow jerseys in there. Ball's going to be played out to Brittany Almeida. She's going to step inside, put it to the far post. Just a little bit too high for Bartram, but it's a good sign of intent from Queens there. That's what they're going to want to do: create some separation through wide spaces. And it looks like UIT's tactical change First involves an out-and-out right winger in in, in uh, Ty Gordon. Uh, maybe uh, 
maybe there's no left winger and Tasia Henderson's playing like a central role and they're going to see if they can get players like Mithrush involved but uh, I'd say more it's a front it two becomes a three. It also looks like uh, Shribney may have dropped into the right mid yeah. position as yeah. well so it'll be interesting. It's definitely attacking any way you cut it and we'll see what it looks like in the final third but it's definitely attacking intent. Yeah. As uh, that ball's going to go out for a UOIC throw. I mean first four minutes of this second half UO, uh, UOIT has been kind of pressed by Queens and Queens has had a, the lion's share of the possession which is very positive for them coming out of the halftime. So that ball's thrown in. Good challenge there by Skoko, and she wins a free kick for her team just inside the UOIT half. Queen's coach made a great tactical change by the looks of it because so far everything's coming up yellow in this second half. Yeah, he's, he's playing to his strengths, uh, and we're using the width, getting uh, getting our, our, our big center forward, Tara Bartram, involved. It's a good idea to bring her back in right at the... Uh, Start of the second half as Tyra Gordon challenges, unable to win that ball, and Queen still controls it. It's going to end up all the way here to Glasspool. Plays it inside to Brado, who gets it across the calendar. Good turn step. Almeida trying to find Bartram, just unable to, but it ends up back with calendar. Good shot there, right at the crossbar, but good save by the uh, UOIT goalie. And it's going to be a corner for Queens. Nice save, tougher than it looks. We got, uh, she said, would have the sun in her eyes from that position, and and a uh, nice shot there by uh, Calendar. Yeah, they tried to schedule this game early enough so that the sun won't play a factor, but you never know. It could still bother the keeper in this second half. Queens again, looking like they're setting up short, but last time they sent the ball in long anyway. It'll be interesting to see what happens here. Players they'd be looking for are Callender and Bartram here. Oh, for sure. It looks like they have the height advantage, and there's Bartram got her head to it. Unfortunately, just a little wide of that post. Great chance there for Queens, and they've mm -hmm. uh, they've been pressing UOIT in the second half so far. Yeah, hats off to Queens. They've looked. They made the tactical adjustment at halftime. It's starting to pay off for them. And if you notice, the game has slowed down. It's playing right into their hand. Uh, UIT would want to amp up uh, the pace of this game and go back to where they want to play. Yeah, their coach is going to want them to start moving the ball a little bit quicker and forcing Queens to go for runs. This is a very interesting tactic from Queens as well. I, I just noticed this every time uh, UIT has a goal kick. Bartram drops all the way back almost to a center defensive mid roll to try to be first to that ball and they push people forward very rare you see that from a striker they don't usually like to go back that far yeah she's a two-way player as UOIT controls the ball all the way back to Bordeloo she sends it forward to Tyra Gordon she brings that ball down to Shribney trying to find Henderson uh, Red Ho lost that ball up in the air a little bit of sloppy play from both sides right now. No one's really able to control that ball, but here goes UOIT's attack, sending it out wide to Shribney. He's gonna pass it back to number nine, Matthews, and she'll try to get into the box, unfortunately, unable to get that one there. That last ball right now is uh, haunting UOIT. They just can't get it there. Bartram brings it down, trying to find a player. That got her up in the face, but she just kept playing. Maybe not the face by the looks of some of the calls, but. <laughs> and here comes Queens going the other way, trying to run at UOIT. Jenny Wolliver. Jenny Wolliver. Hard, sh low shot. You never know what those ones, but I don't think she got enough on that one to really challenge the keeper. Yeah, just a little bit of a miss hit, but again, just goes to show you how, how uh, small of a moment Jenny Wolliver is going to need to change this game. Yeah, she's always a little bit unseen in that first half but good run there to get her into this second half early just eight minutes gone so far in the second half still lots of time left for Queens to get a goal back and force this game a little bit more good play there by Brado here comes Laura Callender Taking the space given to her, gets it out to Woolliver. She cuts in. She plays it out wide to Levy. She's going to try to get this into the box. There it is, just right at the keeper, unfortunately. Queens has looked good so far yeah. in the second half. Nice text textbook play, you, good use of the width. 
I like this switch of uh, Wolever and Almeida so far. It's allowing them both to cut in onto their stronger mm -hmm. foots, and uh, they're going to get chances off of that. Yeah, it works, uh, especially since Tara Bartram will vacate space that those two players can enter. Ball's thrown in to Tyra Gordon, and she gets it back to Shribney. They're going to try to find Henderson on that one. Great defense, though, by Queens, just suffocating that point of attack. Cliff gets it into Wolever, who drops it off the calendar, and they're going to get it all the way out wide. Bartram trying to find Wolever one more time. Surprise move there by Wolever. Nice, yeah, beautiful nice tackle. She's going to switch yep. it outside to Almeida. Almeida in acres of space. <laughs> That's what they're going to try to do is isolate. Oh, nice turn there by Almeida. Trying to find that far <laughs> post. That's uh, Frampton made it. Yeah. Herculean dive, but lucky yeah. for her, the ball was wide anyway. Yeah. I mean, that one was for the cameras, maybe. Nick. <laughs> <laughs> she knows this game's being televised, <laughs> so she wanted to get on camera. And she's going to take her time to uh, set up this goal kick. Taking her time, <laughs> taking her time to set this one up, and here it comes. Fantastic kick. She's a great striker of the ball as a keeper. Gets that ball over half every kick she takes. It's a great physical battle in the middle, and that's going to be Kohler Grasso coming away with it. Tyra Gordon, nice one touch down to Shribney. Henderson, one on one with Cliff. Cliff does a fantastic job defending that, making sure that the through ball doesn't get through. Ball's played out, and Matthews gets it just inside the Queen's half. Plays it into Kohler Grasso, who gets it out to Shribney. Good block there, and Shribney takes a unnecessary fling at the ball, and that's going to end up in the corner for a Queen's throw. And as, you, as soon as you say that, there's four or five blue jerseys going to pin in the Queens team. Good clearance, sending it out to Woolever, who just was unable to control that one. And Voisin is able to bring it down to Zajac. Tries to find that ball through, unable to. And Alicia Levy is going to get it out to Woolever. She's going to run down that right side as Bartram sends it forward. Look at that run. Wolever's going to try to beat Voisin there. And Voisin does a fantastic job making sure that she's the first one there. Nick, I don't know. This second half, uh, this UIT pairing of, of Tasia Henderson and Tyra Gordon just hasn't looked as dangerous as uh, Shribney and Henderson did in the first half. Uh, I wonder how long before Coach Mosavat recognizes that and, and goes back. I appreciate Tyra Gordon's pace, but uh, they just haven't created enough. And Henderson hasn't looked as busy as she did in the first half. Nifty back heel there from Zajac who gets it to her teammate and they try to cross it over to Shermie. Just nothing doing there as Queen's able to cut it out. It's almost like UOIT uh, came out of that halftime a little bit flat. They're unable to make string passes together like they did in the first half. That look absolutely Queen's just taking advantage. They look magnificent in the first half and uh, yeah, a little bit of pop missing. I agree with you, Nick. I would say Queen's has looked fairly magnificent so far to start this yeah. second half. As that ball's played down the right side, left side, sorry, and uh, no one's able to get to that one. There's very little control so far by the uh, UOIT Ridgebacks in this second half, unfortunately. So they're trying to make plays like they did in the first half. It's just not coming off like it did before. As that ball was almost played through to Tyra Gordon, you just couldn't get anything there. It's Jenny Woolever winning a free kick for UOIT. And there's going to be a substitution for the Ridgebacks. And they're taking off number 10, Jessica Mithrush. And we will get the number of the person coming on as soon as we can. Looks like it's number 5, Michaela Tierney. She had a good game on Friday. Ball sent forward to Bertram. Assuming that's going to be the play every free kick. 
Cole Zajac wins that ball back in Voisin is able to clear it up to Henderson. Levy does a great job trying to win that ball and only gives up a, uh, and actually wins a throw in for her own team. We'll see what this tyranny for Mithrush change does. I thought Mithrush was having a good game uh, to this point and, and we'll see what, uh, what dynamic tyranny brings to this UIT. He might attack. be trying to save Mithrush for it's possible. Uh, uh, onslaught at the end of the game. So still 30 minutes and change left in this second half. Plenty of time for both teams to do something. Queens is going to have to do a little bit more if they want to uh, force the uh, force the game right now. Ball outside. Oh, almost a ball into Almeida. That's the first time I haven't really seen Bartram come over to this near side when the ball's over here. So maybe she might be getting a little bit tired. I'm not sure, but we'll see how that plays out the rest of this half as the long shot is going to be easily handled by Tyrell. A little bit ambitious from that far out. <laughs> yeah. She's going to try to set up this Queens team with a big kick. And there it is. It's going to go right to Calendar. Bartram with a nice flick to Wolever. She's going to play it inside. Almeida. They have Almeida way out right, and there's the switch it needed to be a little bit lighter hit and she would have been in but that's that's what they want to do try to isolate Almeida and try to isolate Wolever on the two sides and create something yeah Almeida was through there uh, a little bit of lack of quality on that final ball but that could be dangerous she has found herself in those spots a few times in this second half uh, I look for her to keep doing that unless uh, UIT makes an adjustment to that she made a uh, good cut in on one of them and had a good opportunity with a shot there's Almeida now. They're trying to give her some space to run into. Good tackle by Bordelou. And Almeida's still down a little bit. Slow, slow, to, slow get to get up. But she uh, is back on her feet. I think that was the uh, knee that is hurting for her right now that she got tackled on. So it's good to see her back up on, the f on her feet, though. Well, she's a great quality player and uh, one that you would want a lot of young players that are coming up to emulate. She, she's dy dynamic, not afraid of the ball. She will run at defenders. And uh, I love watching her play. As uh, Matthews took her time to take that throw, the ref a little bit up upset with her. We'll have to watch that. If she does it again, maybe a yellow card for time wasting may come out. But hopefully you don't want to see those at all. That ball's played forward, and Will ever lost that battle to Henderson. The two most dynamic players on the field, mm -hmm. if you ask me, going up against each other there. I agree with you, Nick. This is going to be, looked like it was going to be switched, but it ends up being sent into the middle, and now they get it all the way out to Will ever. She cuts in, does a great job cutting in. Ends up on Bertram's feet, and Ryan does a nice job cutting that one out. Those balls out to Wolever have set up a couple good opportunities for this Queens team in this second half. She cuts in and creates space for everybody to run into. Yeah, I agree. And, and then we see Bartram doing what she does, get that ball to feet. Again, Almeida was, was in some space there. I think that UIT needs to address that or that could come back to haunt them. I think they've done a great job so far making uh, Bartram cut down, come back to the ball. And what that is doing is get creating that space outside for Almeida to create something. As, as Glasspool tries to uh, cut into the middle and Shribney play, uh, playing the ball on the ground gets called. And <laughs> it's going to be a free kick inside the Queen's half. As this half has progressed, Glasspool's gotten more and more involved, creeping up that left side. She could be a factor. Looks like Almeida's going to swing this ball into the box. They have the height advantage in there, Queens does, so if they can get a good ball in here from Almeida, anything can happen. Here comes the ball in. It is a good ball, unfortunately. It's right at the keeper. Yeah. They, need, they needed someone going at that ball right away. I think yeah. everyone else was set up on the far post, yeah. and that's unfortunate for them. Yeah, it was a nice ball, just a, a little bit mis misguided. Maybe need a little bit more uh, swerve on it. That ball's headed and it's going to end up on Almeida's foot. A little bit of a high foot, maybe, in my opinion, but that's hard to. Great job by Shribney to keep that ball in. 
but they're gonna call it out. The ref linesman saw it go out. Hard uh, to I, tell from this I, angle, but. Yeah, I think they got that wrong, Nick. I think Shrivni had saved that ball. There was no daylight between the ball and the line from, from our angle here. We we're really close to the line though, <laughs> so you never know. It might have <laughs> might have just been out. Hard to say, but regardless, Queen's got the ball in quickly and they're gonna switch it all the way out to Woolever and let her do her thing cutting back in. Fortunately, she isn't able to beat that second defender and that ball's out of play for a Queen's throw. Levy's gonna get this ball back in for Queens into Bartram as we expected. Fortunately, she was unable to control that. Great job by Aaron Cliff going through that ball, making sure that she got ball first. But Bordelieu is going to say, yeah, we're not messing with this anymore. Ref just wants to check with Tyra Gordon to make sure she's okay. Yeah, she was involved in a bit of a collision there, had, had her hand up to her face, so referee checking in on that. Ball's played in quickly, and they're going to switch it all the way out to this side. Glass pool. Picks up the ball, looking for the ball into the box. Great ball into the box, well defended. That one's gonna sneak by Wasim, but she's able to get back and get that. I mean, just looking dangerous on these on this left side. Yeah. Got Brittany Almeida. It's ball swinging, nice ball swung in by Claudia Glasspool. Yeah, Glasspool and Almeida have looked very dangerous on this right side as Laura Callender's trying to get the ball. That's going to be out of play for a corner. UOIT was arguing that it was a goal kick, but yeah, they're not happy with that decision. And we have a caution well, for dissent, it would seem. And it looks like it might be uh, Henderson who might have picked mm -hmm. that one up. Not really sure because we, we don't have the benefit of getting those <laughs> calls sent to us, but <laughs> it looked like it was Henderson who was given that card. And she's the one who's talking with the ref right now, so I'm going to assume it was her. That could be a big blow if she maybe picks up another one. Mm -hmm. Ball sent into the box, another good ball. And it's gonna be cleared by UOIT. Queens need one more play, that's the thing. They're just not where that ball is ending up every single free kick. It's close, just not there. Yeah, it's reminiscent of what we saw earlier today with uh, with Western, balls getting put in. And just, they just were just missing that final bit of quality and it finally did come for them. Queens looking dangerous though. That ball's thrown into Brado. She needs to play it, and then she's going to get tripped up, and that's going to be a, uh, another free kick for, for Queens. We talked about it in the first game. Set pieces uh, were the key. And they take this one quickly. It's going to be sent in, not past the UOIT midfielder. They're able to pick it back up, Queens is. And that's going to be another free kick as the Queens player got the ball passed. These are the kind of moments where, where, yeah, where you expect uh, some intervention from the coaches. Where you know, UIT does not look like the same team in the second half, and they they have the capability of uh, of competing at the highest level. They just haven't looked. They've looked a little flat, and I expect Pavin to make some sort of a change, whether it's on field or through substitution. I, I would expect something to be happening soon. He's not going to let this go on much longer. Calendar sending the ball in. Another good ball to the far post. That's number nine there, Kyra Steer for Queens was on it, but she ended up fouling the player. So it's gonna be a free kick for UIT in their own box. Mm -hmm. It's a good ball in from Calendar. They're, yeah, beautiful. they're getting the service. Just need that player there to finish it off. That's yeah. what they're looking for right now. Yeah. I guess you could say that was the same thing the Mustangs had earlier <laughs> yeah, today. Yeah. Had the service, had the opportunities, just need that finish. And it only takes one, especially in a game that's one nil. Only takes one. Now made it not happy with that decision. I think she, the match officials got that one right there. I think the ref did as well, and uh, Queens is gonna, Matthews is gonna take her time here. She was warned earlier about wasting time, so. Handball, foul in the back. Tribney, sure I think it was a foul in the back there at Tribney, and I think she did a good job of uh, making sure the match official knew that she had gotten impeded there. Bordelieu is now taking her time as the ref warns her. None of these UIT players are hurrying anything. There's plenty of time <laughs> left, so. Yeah. All they're doing is adding more time on to the end <laughs> as Bordelieu sends this ball in. 
Another great ball. Henderson got to that one. There's Bartram running after it. Gets it down to Almeida. Trying to get it out to Wollever. They bring it down. They're going to send it over the top. Unfortunately, Ryan's there to get that one, but it's going to come down to Wollever. Queens is panicked a little bit there. Probably had more time than they thought. It's going to end up Tyra Gordon's foot. Nice flick over. Get some nice cheers from <laughs> yeah, the UOIT a little bit of flash. fans after that <laughs> move by Gordon. 20 minutes and change remaining in regulation. one nothing UOIT here in the OUA final. That ball's played back to Tyrell. That's a dangerous ball. I don't like seeing that as a coach, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, you, you got to put a little bit more pace on that. Ball flicked over the top to Henderson. Tried to finish that with her right foot. Probably would have been better off hitting that with her left foot, but it would have been out of stride. Nice save anyway from Tyrell. Could be the spark UIT is looking for. They need to encourage some attack here. As that ball sent forward and Voisin heads it to herself. Ball ends up on Levy's foot. Gives it into Callender who passes it to Wollever. Does a great flick. Hard challenge there. Callender's able to get it out to her back line and gets it all the way out here to Glasspool. Good move oh. there. And that's a hard tackle there by Shribney. And I think that's no. going to be a card for her. It's a it's yellow card there yeah. for Shribney. Notwithstanding the foul, it was a great move by Glasspool. A, li a little stop and go shows that she's got the ability to be dynamic and create from this left side. She's been getting better as the half goes on. And I did mention before the game, or before the half, I should say, that Shribney was a uh, close to a card mm. yesterday. So the fact that she picked one up today, that's yeah. two games in a row. Yep. Yeah. Almeida's going to send this free kick in on this near side. Great shot there from our camera crew mm -hmm. getting this free kick. Waiting for a substitution for Tyra Gordon has been taken off, and they've put Williams back on. Probably going to push Shribney back up front with Henderson. It's a good ball in right at Bartram. She flicks it on. But no one there on that far post for a second free kick in a row. That's going to be a corner. Very well won by uh, Queens there. I think that was uh, Jenny Woldever. Jenny, uh, she's, she's very busy. She creates things where there's uh, there's not a lot to be created, so good for her. They got a corner out of it. Last one looked dangerous. Let's see what yeah, happens here. I, I find it funny that every single corner they set up short with Almeida and Woldever. It doesn't matter which side of the field it's on. They both set up short. Mm -hmm. Another good ball in, but right at... The Queen's goaltender. They keep the ball, or the UIT goalkeeper, I should say. They keep that ball, though. That's going to go out for another corner. Yeah, I think keep. the goal here with the two on the ball is that they can drag two UOI team players out as well, th thus creating more room for their big players, Callender uh, and Bartram. So I think this is a this is more of a tactical move. I don't think the intent is to play anything short. Yeah, I would assume not, especially with the uh, size advantage that it looks like Queens has in the box. You want to get that ball up in the air and force them to make a header. Um, but give credit to Frampton. She's done a great job coming out and getting the balls. There's another one in. That's yeah. going to be a foul yeah, in the box. In and it's going to be a UOIT free kick. Ref just says a quick word with Bartram about what happened. Like when a ref does that, doesn't have to give a card, doesn't have to yeah. do anything, but you're just going to give her a little bit of a warning saying, hey, calm down, we don't need anything bad here. Yeah, the in-game management by today's official has been great. She's kept it all about the football here today. Once again, Bartram drops into the midfield trying to win this header. That's sent over. Brittany with a nice, Brittany Almeida with a nice header back to Glasspool. Good pass into Almeida, trying to find something. That's sent forward, and Matthews chests it down. And there's Bartram fighting with two Ridgebacks, trying to keep the ball. Ryan's going to send that ball forward. There's Steer controlling it. There's Henderson. The dangerous player that she is on the ball. 
as Williams tried to turn but unable to get a good ball. Here comes Jenny Woolever. We always say you gotta keep an eye on her. Oh, there's a slip there by number 13, Bradeau. Unfortunate for her because she had Bartram out wide that she was trying to find. Good ball inside by Williams to Kohler Gra Grasso. Yeah, we're starting to see a little more out of UIT here. I think they're they're getting their energy back. They want to see this one through strong. It was a uh, hard challenge there, but it's going to give UIT a free kick. Either What's at half or just inside the UIT or the Queen's half, and it was just at the half line. Good ball into the box by Matthews, but very well defended by Aaron Cliff. Ball into the feet of Woolever. She's just inside UIT's half. Try to play it outside. Great defending there by uh, Michaela Tierney. Going to be a UIT throw on this near side. 15 minutes remaining in this game. If you're the Queens coach right now, what are you telling your team and what kind of tactics are you thinking about maybe changing to? Uh, I think that the, they've got they've got what they want. I think they've got the players they want out there. I mean, I, Winquist looked good for me in the first half. Maybe she finds a part to play here in the last bit. But uh, I think they got to stay the course here. they got to play through their central players. They have to keep it pragmatic uh, and not try to rush things. Good dummy there. Unfortunately, no blue jersey. There's going to be a long shot, and Tyrell's going to take that easily. Look at all that space, though. Mm -hmm. She had tried to play that quick to Woolever. Unfortunately, she's going to give UIT time to set up just to give her own team time to set up. UIT looks like they're dropping right off and uh, just inviting the Queen's attack, moving back their line of confrontation. We'll see what happens. As Almeida tries to beat Matthews on this near side, unable to get it through. That ball sent forward to Shrimney. Tried that one touch flick one more time. And great move there by Tierney. She's had a good second half after coming in. And UIT's going to set up. Back to Tierney, down that left side, gives it into Henderson, who does a nice flick in to the corner, but Levy's there. She's just going to clear that ball out. Trying to weather the storm right now is UOIT. Queen's trying to force the play. Got yeah. just under 14 minutes of regulation time, plus stoppage time to go in this second half. Expect a great end to this game. Great job by... Levy winning that ball down the line. Whole team is working hard on now. They are definitely not going to give up on this game, this Queens team, and I'm sure the coach is instilling that mentality in them right now. As Bartram loses that ball out, but it's a nice slide to try to poke it to Almeida. Just didn't get enough on it. That's going to end up back on her feet here as her and Tierney fight for it. Tierney wins that battle and gets it out wide to Zajac. She sends it forward. But Queens' defense is there to stop it. Very Tierney's just everywhere right now in that center of the midfield. Ball sent into Henderson. She's going to try to beat Aaron Cliff one-on-one. -on -one. Cliff so far has done pretty good against Henderson, but good cut there. Gets the ball across. And it's going to be cleared by Queens, not far. To Williams in the middle to Kohler Grasso, but she's just unable to pull the trigger. And they're going to get a Queens throw. Wow, I think we see an offensive flurry by UIT. In this last six minutes, they've been absolutely bossing the game. So uh, Pavin will be happy with that. No better defense than a solid offense. Queens is going to have to weather this UIT storm and start pushing out or else... Uh, Time is not on their side right now. Levy brings it down, plays it into the middle. They think they're trying to get it out to Woolever, and they do, but she's unable to get a good touch on that. And she gives it right off. Henderson trying with that one-touch flick once again to Shribney. They're still determined to pull those off. When it, when it works, it looks great. They're going to try to switch it out to Almeida by the looks of it, and they're going to get it there. Plenty of time, plenty of space. She's going to cut into the middle, find her teammate, 
great defense there by Kohler Grasso getting back. Senderton takes a hit there from Steer. Steer. Once again, UOIT is going to take their time trying to set this up. Looks like uh, I just saw Bordelou give a little bit of a signal to her right back, maybe indicating maybe they wanted to do a, a short free kick. But it looks like she's going to set up long and send it long instead of giving it to Rachel Matthews. That's a ball over the top trying to find Nicole Zajac on the far side. Just didn't get it there. And there's Bartram going at a little, going for a little bit of a run. It's going to get all the way out here to Brittany Almeida. A nice little touch around the defender, Matthews, but just a little bit too far for her to get onto it. There's going to be a substitution. Bartram had uh, a little bit of a run of the play there. She was trying to hold it up, uh, allow some support to come. It just didn't come quick enough. And it looks like they're taking Brittany Almeida off. Uh, it's a bit of an interesting substitution. Maybe they're noticing. I haven't noticed in the last couple of minutes, so she hasn't been running at the defender as much. Maybe she's a little tired. They're going to get a different r player running at the defender, but she's looked really good in the second half, so that's a bit of a head scratcher for us. It is Lauren Winquest coming on to this left side. Like she I mentioned, she looked very dangerous in the first half, and uh, she does have a history on this field of making things happen. So, so there's not too much of a drop-off, I would say, from Almeida no. to Winquist, but still a bit of a head-scratcher for how well Almeida was mm -hmm. playing. Just under 10 minutes of regulation time left, still one nothing UOIT, but 10 minutes in soccer is a lifetime to these players now. Matthews plays it inside to Tierney. Lays it off to Kohler Grasso, and they're going to go all the way back to Bordeloup. Sends it long, trying to find Henderson, who does a great flick to Shribney, but good defending there by Aaron Cliff. Matthews into Henderson, back to Matthews. Trying to find Shribney in the middle, but Cliff is there again. She's been fantastic for these Gales so far this afternoon. She's going to need to be key for the rest of this game. Matthews keeps winning the headers down this line. It's going to be played all the way out to the far side to Levy. Looks inside to Bartram and up front. She lays it off to Callender. Trying to find Winquist on this side. That's a hard ball to play. Needed to be yep. a little bit further into the corner. She was going to win that one. Yeah, it's always going to be difficult for Winquist. Glasspool is going to try to usher this ball out the side. She is able to win the throw for the Queen's Gales. It's going to be interesting to see the tactics from UOIT if they're going to maybe try to do a. Uh, Substitution to try to kill a little bit of time. Yeah, you would think so in the last five or six minutes that they've started to own the play a bit more and, and maybe Pavin leaves things as is and just lets it play out organically. As a UOT player falls in the middle, uh, trying to get a call, but nothing doing there. And I didn't see what happened. So. Yeah, right, yeah. Ball played forward, Levy intercepts, Calendar gets there. As Calendar and Will ever try to win the ball on that far side. Ball's played through. Henderson's going for a little bit of a run. She's there trying to finish this one. Just shot wide. Great opportunity for her to double her tally today, get finished with that brace. But it's looked good from UOIT these last five or so minutes, I would say. Great play by Tasia Henderson. She hasn't had the same half as she had in the first, but nice outside the foot, good technique, writes herself as good attempt on goal. It's a hard finish going across your body trying to find that far post with the left, right foot great tackle there by Tierney and now here comes Williams and Henderson great defense by Queens there to get back and make sure that everyone got behind that ball Matthews taking her sweet time to get to this ball <laughs> Be interesting going in these last seven minutes, Nick, to see how uh, how Queen sets up. Are they going to start throwing numbers forward? Looks like a couple players warming up on the sidelines. They might have to go to an all-out attack scenario in the next couple minutes. It is the final of OUA, but both these teams have clinched spots in nationals. So, yes, you want to go for that gold. Obviously, that's a huge boost to go into nationals. But do you want to risk 
possibly getting a player hurt, right? It's mm -hmm. a good That's point, Nick. There's a substitution coming, and the crowd is showing their support for Teja Henderson. Fantastic game today. Scored the goal in the first half. Yeah, very well deserved applause. Actually, <laughs> seems like applause from both sides. Though. Great player. We need more players like Teja Henderson in the OUA, and uh, hopefully there's some some young players that are watching this game today that would emulate her style of play. She's very busy, very dynamic. That's what you want to see from a player coming through the system. You want to see someone who's going to work hard. Yep. And uh, she, she'll be back for a few more years, I believe. I think she's just yep. a sophomore this year. So she got a couple more years at least to play in this league. So Queens wins a throw, and they take it a lot faster. <laughs> Great job there by the UOIT midfielder, Zajac, getting out to Lauren Winquest, but unable to control it was Lauren. Zajac did a great job pressuring there at the point of attack and helped cut off that play. As Queens tries to bring the ball down, great move there by Brad Doe, trying to find Bartram, and she did. She's just unable to control that ball, and Williams is going to set something up all the way back, and it's going to get all the way back on Bordeloup's feet. Got five minutes remaining in regulation, plus stoppage time. Still one nothing Ridgebacks, but Queens has been pressing, and now it looks like it's UOIT's turn. Ball played over the top, trying to find that second striker. It's going to go out for a goal kick, and now uh, Tyrell's going to try to rush this one. Yeah, now the outcome was a little off, but that was a very nice sequence by UIT, using several different players, some one-touch passing, nice service into the box. Uh, that's the kind of things that gets that uh, the reason they've scored 60 goals this year. <laughs> they can they hit you many different ways. That team. Yeah, they're not. They're definitely not a one-dimensional attacking force. They have uh, multiple facets of their forward play. Great job there by uh, UOIT's Nicole Zajac to uh, get that ball in. As there's going to be a substitution. Uh, Bartram's coming off. They're pushing Windquest up front. Looks like they're going to go for some pace up top with Winquist, and uh, I, I fancy they will go a little bit more direct in these last couple of minutes. Going back on is Sarah Nixon. She played on the right side in the first half. She's going to be playing on the left side in this second half. As they play that ball high, and Matthews is going to easily head that one forward. Missed header there by Kohler Grasso. Is, proves to be a moot point because she gets a second ball anyway. Williams plays it back to Matthews. Sarah Nixon pressuring both of them, and uh, Queens is doing a good job pressing the ball, yep. just not doing anything with it. As Queens plays it around in the corner. Nice move there by Nixon, just couldn't get the ball past fully, and Matthews is called for a free kick. Glasspool rushes up to try to get this in play as much as possible. <laughs> Switch it out to the left, the right side for Levy. They're going to get it out to Woolever. She's going to cut in. Nice turn touch there. As uh, Skoko was uh, trying to take a shot from about 30 yards out. She got two on Friday, but that's a bit ambitious. <laughs> a great piece of skill in the middle of the park there by Queens. Gonna need more of that going forward. Don't have a whole lot of time left. <laughs> but the game's not over until the whistle's blown. We've seen a 90 plus one goal here today. Good challenge there. Ends up on the foot of Levy as Brad Doe doesn't go into that challenge strong enough and loses it. It's out here. Rihanna Kissel passes that out to Matthews. Aaron Cliff is going to get this ball. Got to get this out. Got to get this out as it ends up on Williams' foot. She tries to go for the shot. Brado looking to find Nixon, unable to, but 
Queen's really struggling to get out of, out of their third here. They're gonna have to find a solution quick. As Windquest tries to flick that to herself, but Ryan does a fantastic job to stop that ball. Jamie Ryan has looked fairly strong today in the uh, game. That ball's gonna be sent a little bit too far and it's gonna be a goal kick inside the last two minutes, coming up on the last minute of regulation time. I'm expecting about two minutes of added time, maybe one even. There hasn't been a whole lot. Other yeah, not a whole lot. So Queens is running out of time to make a play. Could have been a handball there. Doesn't look like the ref saw it. Play on. Laura Callender coming through the middle, passes it outside to Jenny Woolever. And she cuts inside, but good cut by the UOIT defense core. They've Aaron uh, Cliff. They played Woolliver perfect there. They sent numbers. They swarmed her. No breathing space, and uh, and she had to give the ball up there. Ball played to Glasspool. Williams and Matthews cuts her out. Nixon does a good job getting back to force the play. Radeau loses the ball there to Williams. Here goes Kissel for a little bit of a run. She's still going on a run across the field. It's gonna go all the way out to the sidelines and Levy is able to keep that in, gets the ball up to the wool lever. She needs to do something quick. Queens is running out of time. Good cross out to the side to Nixon, but she cut in right into Matthews. That ball's gonna come out probably for a Queens throw. Not a whole lot of time remaining, but as we said, yeah. anything can happen until the whistle's blown. <laughs> no, no indication from the match official on how much we're adding yet. Just saw her indicate two minutes right, yep. to uh, Shribney, so we're gonna assume that that's the same for us here. <laughs> As, uh, Laura Callender does a great job turning on that one. Tries to get the shot away. Great defense there. UOIT has all 11 players in their own yeah. third. They're all behind the ball here. Ryan gets up on the header. That's going to be sent out to Jenny Woolever if they can. Laura Callender tries to. Unable to get it there. And Zajac's just going to send it out to the corner, but that's going to be a throw. Assuming the ref's going to add some time for this. We're getting instruction from the UIT coach. Keep everything in front. Looks like we're all behind the ball here. It's going to be switched here to Glasspool. She's going to have some space to run into. She's got to use it as fast as she can. Trying to find Nixon. Cut off there by Matthew. She's had a great second half here. Shutting down this right side. Ball into the middle. Trying to find a player up front is Queens, and that's going to be passed right to Williams. And she's just going to launch it forward. Can't be much time left now. Ref got to be looking at her watch soon. As that's sent forward, and Zajac's going to just bring it down and send it back into the corner. Out of play for a Queens throw. Looking at the ref, still hasn't checked her watch, so... I don't know how much she thinks there's left, but there's the throw. That's well defended there by Kohler Grasso. Might be one sequence left here, Nick. If they're lucky, <laughs> they'll get one sequence left. They need to get this ball forward and fast if they want a chance. Need to switch the play of Nixon all the way on this near side wide open. I think I just saw the ref take a quick look at the watch, and there it is. UOIT is going to be crowned your OUA gold medalist for the 2016 season. Wow, great match. Uh, both teams, excellent, excellent display of the talent here in Ontario. Uh, UOIT, for me, just a little bit better on the day. And uh, congratulations to both teams as they head over to Nationals and represent Ontario. These two teams are definitely very well going to represent the Nationals of OUA very well and uh, we look forward to seeing them play next weekend in that matchup. So we are going to be making sure that you guys see this medal ceremony. It's got a beautiful trophy coming onto the field right now. But let's let's look let's take a look at let's look back at this game right now. Mm -hmm. I mean Queens looked they played a great second half. Um 
but UIT's first half was just too much to overcome. Yeah, Nick, I think there was a coming out of half, Queen's uh, good flurry, maybe 20 to 25 minutes, and I thought they owned the play. They, they got the game pace down to what they wanted, but uh, UIT just a little bit too strong, and they started coming on late. Big players make big plays. Tasia Henderson is a big player. She made a big play today, and maybe even a second there, so all the credit to them. Uh, and Queens was just one, unable to break the, the defense of UIT, who I thought played formidable today. And I would say definitely uh, Tasia Henderson is one of the uh, stars for the game. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you were going to pick three players that re definitely stood out to you from either team, who would they be? I thought Shribney had a great game, uh, more in the first half and the second. But she's she's a workhorse. She's an engine of that, on that team. Uh, on the other side of the ball, uh, we know what Jenny Wolliver can do. I thought Brittany Almeida tried uh, and, and was dynamic. I, uh, Laura Callender, for me, did a lot. Um, both keepers, I thought, played well and did what they had to do in the moments that, that they had to. Just congratulations to both teams. And uh, for everybody out there, it's important to see the quality of soccer that exists, uh, both these teams being in the East but also in the West. So I think it's a fabulous display of soccer. And we get a uh, great shot here of the two teams shaking hands. That's one thing that I love to see at the end of any game, both teams giving respect to the other one for a hard fought. And this was a fantastic final. I think. I think they'll both know that, and I think they'll both know that uh, they now they have a job, almost as a tandem to go represent Ontario at the nationals and and show the rest of the country how how good the quality of soccer here is. And I was going to say they're probably going to be going to nationals and be uh, kind of cheering each other on, yeah. I almost uh, trying to say, hey, yeah. let's go win this for yeah. the OUA now. Yes, they want to win it for themselves, obviously, but they're both going as representatives of OUA, trying to bring that trophy back to Ontario. I agree, Nick. I, I, these two teams are great representations of the quality of soccer in Ontario. And congratulations to all the teams across uh, Ontario. I think this is a great playoff this year. Lots of quality soccer. The weather held up for us, so the, the great players got to play. Uh, and I'm looking forward to see what these two teams do at Nationals. Uh, looking forward for not only Nationals, but maybe next season for both these teams. I think they are set up very nicely. I mean, Shribney is a senior, so they're going to have to find another attacking partner for Henderson. Maybe it is Tyra Gordon. She had a good 30-minute run in the second half there where she played very strong. As we see uh, the UOIT team saluting the fans that are out here. They've They've come out in droves to represent Ontario to watch this final, and they definitely deserve the credit here as well from the fans. Yeah, uh, I, I think uh, UIT a little bit uh, younger, and uh, they, they are set up perfectly for 2017. As we are going to just turn it over to our PA announcer for the medal ceremony here. Kylie Bordalo named player of the game for this final. No real arguments here for me. She played a great game at the back. I agree with you, Nick. Uh, defensive stalwart back there. She gets a nice uh, Porter prize pack. <laughs> and, uh, she's, she's definitely a leader on that team. Yeah. Queens is going to receive their silver medals here uh, from CEO of OUA's uh, Gord Grace. We had a nice chat with him at halftime. It was nice to see him come over and uh, recognize the great work here from everybody. She had a fantastic game. Great game and by Laura Callender, yeah. She had a great weekend. Aaron Cliff as well, a freshman, 
gets to do a lot going forward with this Queens team. I know this is a little bittersweet for these Queens players having just lost to receive these medals, but you know what? They had a great season and they more than deserved the recognition at the end of this year. So I think they need to look at this as, hey, we did everything we could. We got beat by a better team today. Going forward to Nationals, they got to take Turk, put this behind them and look forward. Uh, I agree with you, Nick. This team has nothing to hang their heads about. What a fantastic squad. Well built, well coached, very organized. Bright, bright futures. Yeah, and there, here's Lauren Winquist receiving her medal, a former Mustang player. Got to throw some Mustang pride out <laughs> for our uh, fans out there. Backup keeper there for the Queens player, unfortunately. Didn't get to play this weekend, but... Yeah. One thing I like to see along the sidelines, you see a bunch of the fans who have stood up and are giving both teams a standing ovation, every single player. Yep. And that's that's nice to see. Sarah Nixon had a great game here today as well. She gave her team everything she had. Yeah, played both sides of the mm -hmm. midfield and did a great job. As well as Glasspool. Glasspool played a great game along that left, uh, left back, back position. Um, and did a great job, Maddie. Nadia Skoko got two goals in the semifinal to get Queens here. And now you get your medal. What can we say about Jenny Woolover? Can't say enough. Uh, yeah, another great, great player. Great performance. Levy as well did a great job today to try to limit the UOIT defense. Now we're going to get a look at UOIT get their gold medals as well as their banner and that beautiful, beautiful trophy <laughs> sitting at center field right now. This is a moment that they're going to remember for a long time. As a member of the uh, UOIT, uh, Brass is here to hand out the medals to their team. Coach holding his child, that's always a nice little thing to see. And once again, Bordelow, leader of this team, did a fantastic job today. Yeah. And they're going to look to carry this when they're going into the CIS. Along with their uh, defense partner there, Jamie Ryan. Jamie Ryan, monster back there today. Great performance. As you said, Tierney came on in the second half, and she, I thought she did a fantastic job when she came in. She was pressing every single ball, making yep. sure that no one had anything easy in that midfield. She played all, yeah, all out. Again, she had also had a great game on Friday, so that's yeah. all good. Frampton, first team All-Star OUA in the East, uh, had another great game today. Yeah. Williams wasn't as uh, dominant as she was on Friday, but she still played a yeah. solid game. Good cameo so. performance late. Yeah, made some nice plays on that right side. Cassandra Shribney. Shribney, the uh, senior, receiving her gold medal. Sure, that's a fantastic Tisha moment Henderson. for her. And Henderson getting the uh, biggest cheer from the crowd <laughs> after Boys scoring the goal to win that game yeah. for her. Matthews. Solid work for Matthews Kissel. in the second half to shut down this left side of the Queens Sarah offense. Harvey. All these players just played Lauren as a team today and did a fantastic Maria. job to make sure that they were the ones winning this gold medal. Yeah, Nicole they competed Zizia. all the way through. That's what you want to see from these young athletes. Catherine Kohler Grasso. Kohler Grass, so another first team all star for UIT. Uh, had a fantastic game as well. And really forced to play, I found, in that midfield. Didn't let anything go easy. Along with Tierney and along yep. with uh, the Myth Rush. All three of them did their team. There's a. Ethan 
Here's all the uh, non-dressed players for UIT now getting their recognition. They played all year, they fought yeah. as a team, and I like that they're all getting their recognition. I mean, it looks like we, they're not all getting their medals now, they'll get some of them after. Yep. Um, but a fantastic show for, from the coach to call all the players, even the non-dressed ones. Thank you, coach. We're going to get to see this beautiful trophy raised up nice and high. Kohler Grasso and Bordelou and Ryan. Their journey started in August, and they'll be proud to hoist this thing now. Look at that beautiful trophy being raised up. They also have a banner, but they're not worried about that right now. No one wants to hold the banner. No one wants that trophy. Once again, it's hard for Queens to watch that after playing such a tough yeah. game, but give recognition to UOIT. They definitely yeah. deserve it. They did. They, they had a memorable season, and, uh, and like I said, they, they've been working and getting better week in and week out. Uh, they're built for this game. I thought they did great. Their program's not too old, so it's nice to see that they're producing in the OUA. Yeah, well-coached group. Uh, very, very tight-knit. We had the privilege of playing them in the preseason, and you could see it from, from the, the outset that they were going to be organized and formidable all season long. Well, we've had a great day of soccer here. It's been a pleasure to sit alongside you on car. Yeah. Um, I can't, you couldn't have asked for anything more from the OUA Final Four. Four teams played really, really hard and did a fantastic job. I'm looking forward to seeing these two teams play at Nationals yeah. next weekend um, and seeing all, all the teams come back for next year's OUA season. It's going to be yeah. great. Yeah, the prep for 17 starts now, and uh, these teams will be in the driver's seat, and the rest of the teams will be looking to get better. But uh, thank you for having me, Nick. Really appreciate it. Uh, and everyone who's put on such a great weekend here at University of Western, you guys have done a great job. And uh, onward to the Nationals. Let's uh, continue to celebrate all the soccer we have in Canada. Yeah, Western University has put on a fantastic uh, show here this weekend, and uh, you couldn't ask for a better weekend either. The weather's been fantastic, so... Looking forward to 2017. I, I will be looking forward to seeing how your team plays down in Guelph. I will also be watching Western very closely myself. But it will be interesting to see how these two teams come back from Nationals and repeat. From everyone here at Mustang TV, my, I'm Nick McVicker alongside On Car Dylan. We had a great day today, guys, and we uh, look forward to the Nationals for the women's soccer.